Welcome to Eaton Power Quality's How To Series. In this video, you will learn how to install and perform basic tasks within Intelligent Power Manager. The following sections will guide you through the required setup procedures. Section 1 How to install and load Intelligent Power Manager. Section 2 How to configure node access and events. Section 3 How to change the administrator password and add users. Section 4 How to set up alert notifications. Section 1 How to install and load Intelligent Power Manager. Locate and double click on the executable file. Click Yes to grant permission to launch the installation on the operating system. The welcome screen will appear. Click Next in order to begin the installation. The end user license agreement must be read and accepted before you are able to proceed. After reviewing, click Accept. The default installation folder will be correct. Click Install to continue. Once the installation has successfully completed, click Finish to launch IPM. Enter the default username and password of admin in all lowercase letters, then click Login. IPM will provide a warning in order to let you know that the default password will need to be modified. Click OK. At this point, you have successfully installed and loaded IPM onto your computer. You will notice that IPM has generated four shortcuts in the Start menu. Open Eaton Intelligent Power Manager. Once selected, IPM will initiate the main graphical user interface and begin monitoring. Stop Eaton Intelligent Power Manager. Once selected, IPM will stop or shut down in order for another installed application to be started. Only one application can operate at a time on a single PC, so a stopping feature was created to easily disconnect IPM. Examples of other software installations would include Intelligent Power Protector and UPS Companion. Start Eaton Intelligent Power Manager. Once selected, IPM will start up from a non-active state. This shortcut will act as a redundant method of starting IPM. Also serve as a tool for reactivating IPM from a stopped state. Uninstall Eaton Intelligent Power Manager. This shortcut will guide you through uninstalling the program. As Intelligent Power Manager opens for the first time, the Auto Discovery view will be displayed. In the Auto Discovery view, there are various options that can be used for scanning the subnet for node installations, including Quick Scan, Range Scan, Address Scan. In this video, we will focus on the Quick Scan option. You will learn more on the other options in the subsequent videos. IPM will conduct a scan for all Eaton installed products using its Quick Scan tool. The scan is based on the subnet of the machine that is hosting IPM. For example, our virtual machine address is 10.130.19.18 with the subnet being 10.130.19.1. The quick scan tool will search in the parameters of 10.130.19.2 through 10.130.19.25. If the node's IP address is within the subnet parameters, it will be added to the node list. If the node's IP address is not within the parameters, it will be skipped and not added to the parameters. Quick scan will initiate each time IPM is opened. Once complete, all of the nodes detected will be shown in the node list. This feature will import the following types of equipment into IPM's node list for monitoring capabilities. Network management cards, EPDUs, software installations such as UPS Companion, and other instances of Intelligent Power Protector and Intelligent Power Manager. Section 2. How to configure node access and events. The node list will display all of the nodes that were discovered during the scanning process. IPM will require access for each node in order to monitor. You will now enable the access for each node. This will allow IPM to push information back to the nodes to establish communication for monitoring. First, we will add the Access column to the node list functions. Hover the mouse over any of the headers in order to engage a drop-down menu. Click on the drop-down arrow provided in order to open the menu. Hover the mouse over the Column option. 
locate the access option and place a check mark in the box to the left. Once checked, the access column will appear within the node list. The access column will allow visibility to determine whether or not the nodes are linked correctly. Correctly linked nodes will generate a key icon, while the nodes that were linked incorrectly will generate an X over the key icon. In order to correct issues with the linkage, right click on the node that you want to correct and click the option for set node access parameter. Enter the username and password for the nodes. Click Save. The node list will now display the key icon without the X in order to illustrate that access has been enabled. Section 3. How to change the administrator password and add users. Once IPM has been installed successfully, it is recommended to change the administrator password. First, locate the Views column on the left-hand side of the interface. Next, locate the Settings folder. Then, locate the User List option. Highlight the Admin User Profile found under the center screen. Right-click on the profile and select the option to Edit User. Once the Edit User dialog box opens, enter and confirm the desired password. Click Save to continue. Users can also be added and granted either an administrative or basic level of permissions. First, locate the Views column on the left-hand side of the interface. Next, locate the Settings folder. Then, locate the User List option. Highlight the Admin User Profile found on the center screen. Right-click on the profile and select the option to Add User. Once the Add User dialog box opens, create a specific login ID for the user. Enter and confirm the desired password. Select the level of permissions granted to either Admin, which has full read-write access, or User, which has read-only access. Click Save to continue. Section 4. How to set up alert notifications. Alert notifications can be configured to initiate during specific node events. There are three types of alerts, email, command, such as an execute script program, notification, represents pop-up alert notification that can be set to the alarm box, which is available through the system tray icon. We will now set up email alert notifications for warning alarms and critical alarms. First, locate the views column on the left-hand side of the interface. Next, locate the settings folder. Then, locate the Actions option. Highlight the pre-configured email action located at the center of the Actions pane. Click on the option Edit Selected Action. At this point, you will be able to configure email notifications to send daily reports detailing warning notifications from the specific day. We will start by selecting the event categories which the generated email will be based on. Click on the pencil icon next to Event Categories. A dialog box will open and provide options for selecting event categories. Click the All Events box and then click Save to continue. Next, we will set up the criteria for email notification. Action Active. Click the box on the right to place a check mark. Action Name. Create a name for the specific action, for example, Daily System Warnings. Event Criticalities. Only select the yellow exclamation icon box. From View. Select all views in order to encompass all areas for alerts. Action Type. Select Email. Define the SMTP server by entering the server information. Enter the login and password information. Recipient. Enter the name of the person that will receive the email. The email subject and message will be populated based on the device that triggers the alarm. Set Digest to Every Day. Click Save to continue. In order to set up email alert notifications for critical notification alarms, first, locate the Views column on the left-hand side of the interface. Next, locate the Settings folder. Then, locate the Actions option. Highlight the recently created Daily System Warnings action located in the center of the Actions pane. 
Click on the option, Copy Selected Action. Enter a name for the new action, for example, Email on Critical Alarms. Click Save to continue. Click the recently created Email on Critical Alarms action located on the Actions pane. Click on the option Edit Selected Action. Click on the pencil icon next to Event Categories. Click the All Events box and then click Save to continue. Next, we will set up the criteria for email notification. Action Active. Click the box on the right to place a check mark. This will enable the notification. Action Name. Create a name for the specific action. Event Criticalities. Only select the red exclamation icon box. From View. Select all views in order to encompass all areas for alerts. Action Type. Select Email. Define the SMTP server by entering the server information. Enter the login and password information. Recipient. Enter the name of the person that will receive the email. The email subject and message will be predefined to populate based on the device that triggers the alarm. Set digest to every minute. Click save to continue. Please note that you may create as many email notifications as you find necessary. The emails that you have created will provide the basic level of notification for all users. Now you will focus on setting up pop-up notification alarms. First, locate the Views column on the left-hand side of the interface. Next, locate the Settings folder. Then, locate the Actions option. Highlight the pre-configured Notification action located in the center of the Actions pane. Click on the option Edit Selected Action. Next, you will configure the pop-up notifications criteria. Action Active will enable the notification. Action Name. Create a name for the specific action, for example, Notification to System Tray. Event Criticalities. Only select the yellow exclamation icon and the red exclamation icon boxes. From View. Select all views in order to encompass all areas for alerts. Action Type. Select Notification. Click Save to continue. Please note that if you have an unmonitored server installation, you will need to uncheck the box labeled Action Active. If the installation is unmonitored, no one would see the notifications, so they will not need to remain active. This concludes Level 1, Basics of Intelligent Power Manager from Eaton Power Quality's How To Series. In this video, we have covered installing Intelligent Power Manager, configuring nodes, changing the administrator password, and setting up alert notifications.